All right, guys, it is Tuesday night. I've got number 19, the smoothest tight end wide receiver out of Tallahassee, Florida, ever played for the Commodores, Kerry Clem. How are you doing tonight, bud? I'm good, Bernard. Good to see you, man. I think I may be the only wide receiver tight end out of Tallahassee, but I'll take, I'll take it. No, I, I, I know there's at least 15 others, but <laughs> Kerry and I have been, been talking so much offline, it got past us after 7 o'clock. That's what happens when you don't see each other for quite a while. It has been a while. Good but to I'm see you, so glad that, that Kerry, that you, you've joined us for tonight. And guys, before we jump in with what's going to be a great conversation, how about us sitting 2-0, and number one in the East? And if you look at the standings, look who's in the bottom of the standings. I'm just going to say it. It's that yeah. team the East. But we got a big <laughs> one. We've got Wake Forest. Sam Hartman's playing this week for Wake. But the team is, I mean, we've scored over 100 points in two games. Come on now, we got a little bit of momentum, wouldn't you think? Hey, that was that bandy offensive old. Putting points it on the does. board. But we need some more butts and stands. Come on. I know it rained last weekend. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> we got, oh, we got Doug Bradley. Hey, Doug, how you doing, DB? Good to see you, bud. And I know there's some others who've rolled through, but I just can't. When they come, to, come through too quickly, I can't always see who it is who rolls in. Kerry Clem, where are you hiding out these days? Where's home? Where's your beautiful family? Tell, share yeah. a little bit about the current version of you and your family. Then we're going to, we'll rock it back into the 80s. In a minute. Absolutely, man. My pleasure. My pleasure. So home for me these days is in uh, Maryland. I live in Bel Air, Maryland, about half an hour north of Baltimore. We've been there 20 years now. Um, relocated would work and Thought we'd only be there for, you know, a couple of years. And <laughs> here, here we are. It's the only place my kids have ever known. So uh, I'm there with my wife uh, going on 30 years now. We've been together. Um, and uh, we've raised our wonderful kids. My son, Grayson, who's 25, now lives out in uh, Los Angeles um, with his wonderful fiance, Ashley, and our two-year-old granddaughter, Sophie. Um, but she's been a blessing. She was one of the, the COVID babies. <laughs> oh, wait, I got to ask, what's your grandpa name? Grandpa. Grandpa. <laughs> I don't see any gray. I don't no, see any it's gray. In there. It's in there. I, I worked on the lighting before we came on, on nice, the call. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, and then I've got a uh, 21-year-old daughter, Kerrigan, who is in school in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. She is at uh, St. Joe's University that uh, used to be, at least her branch of school was University of the Sciences there, where she's been playing uh, Division II volleyball for the past few years. Awesome. So uh, awesome. they've kept me busy, and uh, we found a nice home in the Mid-Atlantic, and it's been great. And uh, right now, currently, I'm operating out of uh, my apartment up in the New York area, where uh, I work quite a bit during the week. Very good. Y'all catch all that athleticism on the next generation in the Clem family? It, ble it bleeds down. They probably yeah, should have got, got it from my wife. We got yeah. it from my wife's side of the family. <laughs> well, at least you said it. I was thinking it. <laughs> Joe Peebles is in the house. Pat Fitt oh, is in the house. Joe Peebles. All Andy, right. Showing some love. Coach Gary Shepard says to tell you that I'm one of his all time. Oh, no, that you're one of his yeah. all time. Yes. <laughs> that sounds right. That and sounds played, right. And you played for a good friend of his, Al Blizzard. Yeah, Coach Shepard recruited me out of, he, yeah, Coach Blizzard. Al, uh, he was my coach for a number of years, and Coach Shepard came down to Tallahassee to recruit me, and uh, he swayed me to come to Vandy. Um, I love Coach Shepard. Glad to see he's on tonight. And he's, I'll say it for you, Coach. You got to go see him and Linda up in Clarksville. You got to go to Edwards Steakhouse and get a big steak. I can do that. <laughs> uh, Pat, Pat wants to know if you remember what floor on Lupton you lived. What floor? Oh, maybe the second or third. We'll go with second. That's close enough. Yeah, yeah. Me, yeah, me and Derek were there. Me and Sorter. Lou was on the floor. Rod Key, Brett Hayes, uh, Jonathan Daniels, JD. We were all on the same floor, causing ruckus. Man, that's some athletic floor. talent right there. Oh, uh, we we had it going on. I don't. You, we man. had a lot of other stuff going on too. <laughs> and I. Brett Hayes has been on the show, man. He is killing it over at Nike. He is. I see Brett popping up all the time. He's doing great yep. work there. I just got to hang out with, with Sweet Lou in Hawaii. We had so much. Nice. That was an awesome trip. So good to see Lou. 
Uh, who else we got? Uh, I think those are the two of the names. I can't get Rod Keith to come on the show. I don't know what his deal is. Uh, and, oh, well, Carter. Big D's been on the show, and he's I saw that. PR. I saw that. In fact, I had to rewatch his interview with you just to make sure he didn't say anything disparaging about me as he was answering those questions. Oh, we're, but we're going to get to what you had to <laughs> practice in a few minutes. Kerry. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, Kerry, how did you sneak out of Tallahassee? That was the heyday of Florida State. Florida yeah. was on the rise. Miami was huge. Auburn was in your backyard. How did you get out of Tallahassee back in 87? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's kind of an interesting story. So I went to high school at, at the time was called Florida High School. Mm -hmm. And it's a development, developmental research school that was on Florida State's campus. Mm -hmm. So I spent 10 years on Florida State's campus. And our football team every now and then would go up and run some practices with Florida State. So I was, I was into the Seminoles quite a bit. Um, when I got to the point of recruiting, and had a talk with some of the coaches, the biggest drawback I had was that I was too slow for them, for their offense. Um, back then, they had, they had just um, pulled in Deion Sanders. So, you know, we got to work out with him a little bit. They have receivers like Ronald Lewis. These were guys that also ran track in the off season <laughs> at world-class speed. And um, they, like a few of the other schools in the area that you mentioned, wanted me to come and play tight end. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was in high school, I was probably about a buck 95 mm -hmm. and all of these coaches were telling me, we'll bring you here. We'll put some weight on you. We'll turn you into a tight end. And I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I'll ever be a tight end. I'm a receiver. I'll never get that big. I can barely hold 195. Mm -hmm. And Vandy was one of the few schools that said, we'll let you play receiver. Um, when I came to visit, they showed me video of Carl Parker. And Carl Parker's position. And this when we were running that wide open offense. And I think Carl was a C back. I can't remember. I think no. it was a C. And he was all over the place. Backfield, yeah, wing, slot. Was slinging it. Yeah. And I'm thinking, that's the position I want to play. Mm -hmm. Which is, you know, one of the enticing things about going to Vandy. And I'll be dang, uh, Bernie, if <laughs> by the time I checked in freshman year for two days, I was already up to 219. <laughs> Just headed right towards a three-point stance <laughs> as a tight end. Yes, headed right towards it. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, too slow for Florida State. Um, but I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done it any other different. No, you sure wouldn't have. And one guy we just brought up, well, I want to I want to welcome and mention one of the beloved Keystone Cops, Billy Smith, as Joyce signed in. Hey, Billy, as always. And Derek, I want you to post some photos of whatever you've been cooking today, because we were just <laughs> talking about you and rewatching our conversation from a few months back. But Derek Sarter is in the house with us tonight. Oh, D. Sarter, that's my man. Oh, well, we're going we're going to come back to him in just a minute. <laughs> but Carrie, what other schools did you go visit, or did you seriously consider either yeah. before or after you came up to Nashville to visit? You know, it came down serious consideration to Vandy, Duke, mm -hmm. Tulane, and the University of Georgia. Um, Georgia, you know, kind of stuck in there um, because my high school coach, Al Blizzard, um, had some good connections there, and, and we chatted a little bit. And it was another one of those schools that wanted to turn me into a tight end. And, again, I just, I just couldn't, you know, see myself, you know, getting there. Um, Duke was an interesting visit. That's where hey, Spurrier uh, was there at the time, wasn't he? Well, so there's a funny story. So Duke is where Derek and I first met. We mm -hmm. were on a recruiting visit together mm -hmm. and we were being recruited by coach Steve Sloan, who mm -hmm. was the head coach. Mm -hmm. And the Friday we showed up for our visit, we go to the evening reception and dinner and they announced they brought, they've got a new coach Sloan's left and they're bringing in this new guy named Steve Spurrier. And Spurrier comes in, introduces himself, and we're like, who the hell is this guy? Mm -hmm. like, he's not the guy who recruited us. I don't know anything about him. Mm -hmm. And so essentially zoned out, <laughs> like most of the visit, because of this whole, you know, bait and switch thing that happened to us, unbeknownst to us, that, you know, the old bowl coach was who he was. Yeah. And so, um, and so that evening, I remember Saturday evening, Derek was, uh, he was just coming off of his knee surgery from high school. Mm -hmm. and our hotel rooms weren't too far from each other. And we chatted in the hall. And 
we both kind of realized we didn't want to go and do the Saturday night events. So we stayed in the hotel, ordered some pizzas and hung out in the hotel that evening and chatted a little bit and talked about the schools we were visiting and how we could stay connected at some point to figure out where we were going to go. And, um, you know, I'll get back to that. This is how we, you know, both kind of landed at Bandy. And then lastly, it was um, Tulane. And when I was at Tulane, I was being recruited by Mac Brown, who mm -hmm. was there. Mm -hmm. And he, of course, just talked badly about his brother Watson the whole time in a, in a brotherly joke of the way. He's like, you don't want to go play for my brother up in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Kerry, I got to ask, go back to yeah. just a second. Coach yeah. Shep thinks that Tommy Bowden would have been your position coach, maybe recruiting you at the time. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. He's not, he's not wrong. He's right. And by chance, was Clarkston Hines your Duke uh, player who escorted you, whatever the term is? Hines was there. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, I can't remember what year he was. He was. He, he was my year because he and John okay. Newman are both from the Bowl School. Okay. And Clarkston yeah. went on to have some record-breaking touchdowns freshman year, but mm -hmm. <laughs> he TG, was there. Tony Piercy. Hey, oh, hilarious. T TP says, Boo says to tell you, Nate says hello. <laughs> oh, man. That's we, what are we at? We're, we're, we're in all the 15, 10 minutes, 15 minutes here? Yeah, yeah. He, he made it in there, huh? All right. I told TP. you they're going to come out and show you some <laughs> love. And I was just with Tony and his wife last week in Hawaii. We had so much fun catching up. Man, it was, was awesome. Fun. It was fun. But going back to your recruiting, you know, yeah. little did you know all these connections that later in life you would figure out what transpired. But what sold you? It wasn't just playing receiver or CP's position. I know that. It was the the academic influence? What what of was course. what was going on there? Yeah, no, it was definitely the academic. I mean, you know, the schools that I'm talking about, Duke, Tulane. Yeah. You know, Vandy were all, you know, solid academic schools. Both of my parents were teachers. So, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up around education and, and how important it was. And while I wanted to, you know, obviously like everyone else, take, you know, your athletics to the next level and hopefully play pro ball one day, I knew that the chances of that were pretty slim. And so I wanted to make sure I was, you know, going to get a good education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Vandy obviously, you know, was going to afford that. So, yeah, the visit that I had, you know, I, I tried to think about who, who toured me and I remember so many folks I think I spent some time with you too mm -hmm. um, on my on my visit you yeah. and uh, Jaron Evans and a few other folks yeah. um, but I just really I really loved not only what I saw on the campus um, but but you guys you know mm -hmm. it's something when you can uh, sense the the camaraderie with the team you know and, and the strength of the team on the visit so there are a lot of things that I picked up on my visit to Van that said this is the place for me obviously Coach Shepard had a lot to, to do with that um, but, you know, as, as we get older and our kids go off to college and you start doing college visits, you realize that at that age, you just, you just know, you know, when you know, right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, you, you come up, but hold on. It, it, it's Carrie. If, if I go, if my connection is weak, I'll come right back to you. Sure. You know, we both grew up in the deep South, about hundred miles from each other and from both and you're from Tallahassee. We have the same weather, but Nashville's weather is different than, South Alabama, North Florida, Panhandle weather. You know, we get some real snow up there. <laughs> Had you been exposed yeah. to all that? Yeah, you uh, you glitched on me a little bit, but I think you were asking me about dealing with the weather and the change of yeah, weather. Yeah, dealing with snow in Nashville. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I was not I was not prepared. You know, you're right. We're used to playing football. You know, at best in 90, you know, 95 degree weather, even in, on, you know, in the evening on a Friday night in high school. And I remember first year, by mid-season, we started to have some cold games. Um, and I was not prepared, not prepared. And when you're a receiver and you have to learn how to catch <laughs> a hard leather football, mm -hmm. you know, with no gloves, you, you learn how to adapt pretty quickly. Um, well, but yeah. you also had some pretty good mentors ahead of you in that receiving court. You uh, had Boo Mitchell, you had Carl Parker, you had... Tony Piercy, Jeff Mays, I, I could go yeah. on and on and on, but yeah, uh, I'm sure you yeah. pick up a few things. Oh, for sure. I tell you what, I was very fortunate, very fortunate. Um, 
you know, just getting in with those guys, realizing that, okay, it's going to take some work to get up the depth chart here <laughs> because they're all phenomenal. I think, you know, when I, when I got there, I was behind Boo, and I think he was probably in one of his uh, All-American campaigns at that time or maybe even previously been one the year before that. Um, but, you know, in hindsight, the mentorship was, was phenomenal. And just, you know, not, not only learning, you know, what to do on the field uh, amongst that level of competition and talent, but also off the field. I mean, those are all great guys to have to follow. So I was very fortunate. Yeah, I want to say, oh, Lewis Woolridge is in the house. Hey, Lou. We go, hey, big Lou. We got Ed Parrish. Hey, Ed, thank you for stopping in, guys. I got Kerry Clem originally out of Tallahassee, number 19. I lives up in Bel Air. Kerry, did your high school team throw the ball much? And along with that question is, what was the difference in trying to catch an Eric Jones fastball versus high <laughs> quarterback fastball? Yeah, so my high school threw the ball quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and believe it or not, I was the quarterback for a while, mm -hmm. but I was also the best receiver. So with Coach Blizzard early on, I want to say probably around ninth or 10th grade, we decided it was better for me to receive and they find someone to, be, to throw the ball. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I switched and uh, yeah, you know what? I had some pretty good quarterbacks in, in high school, um, but a, uh, you know, 17, 18 year old arm, you know, out of a division one school in Tallahassee compares nothing to an Eric Jones, you know, heater coming at you. You learn how to move your, pop your head around pretty quick and get your hands up or you're going to eat that ball. I've had EJ on the show and, and had an awesome catch up with him. And no offense to EJ, but no one had a stronger fastball than Marcus Wilson. Doc could throw the ball harder yeah. and than anybody now. In his in defense, he sometimes didn't know where it was going, but he, <laughs> was rolling, he was rolling Ryan at times. I'm sure he had to hurt some fingers. Uh, well, you know what? I'll tell you. So when I played with Eric, I was mostly wide out. So there's a little bit difference in adjusting to that heat when you're 10, 15, 20 yards down the field. When I played with Marcus, I was a tight end. Uh -huh. So you're catching that heat, you're catching that heat on a seven yard drag. You mm -hmm. don't have much time. <laughs> all right, let's see the broke fingers. <laughs> oh, they're all, all the, all the knuckles are bad, man. They're That's all. Right. That's right. Oh, one of my hometown heroes. A-OK, -okay, Aristotle Kirkland. Is in oh, Stottle. Oh my goodness, man. You're bringing them all out tonight. No, you're bringing them all out tonight, my friend. Wow. Doing some love. Man. Gary Clem. That is awesome. That is awesome. Very good. Uh, AOK -okay actually is a city commissioner in our hometown, Dothan. So congrats. Okay. okay. Very good. And I hope you're doing well, my friend. Wow. Uh, I want to talk about practice. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about Allen Iverson practice. I'm talking about... <laughs> you having to come over from one side of the field to help deal with something on the other side of the field. Now, keep in mind, there yeah. is, there is literally an ocean apart between you and he, he's not mm -hmm. going to be on the plane anytime soon. We're not going to tell him where you currently are. So go for it. Let's hear what you had to deal with. Oh, he, he, he knows, he knows. And I'm sure he's going to probably start typing in the chat room that this is a lie, but he knows it's true. And in fact, listening to his interview with you, he admitted to being a troublemaker at practice. Mm -hmm. But I, I, Derek, Derek Sarner, my roommate, my homie, my brother, Derek found his way into fights probably almost every day in practice. And, you know, he was defense. He was in defensive line. I was on offense. And you talk about an ocean apart. You know, when we separate offense and defense in practice, there's a lot of space between the two. And there was one day in practice where he was just going off to the point where I hear my name being yelled from the other side of the field to come get Derek because he's out of control. And again, he's probably not going to remember it because he was out of his mind that day. But I literally had to leave the offensive side of the field to go down there and help break up the fight because he was just off the rails that day. Mm. So that 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 fight that he pulled out of uh, College Park, Georgia, he put in his pocket and brought it to Nashville and he pulled it out <laughs> whatever he needed to. Yeah, so he, he and I had, had quite a bit of talks about, <laughs> about that. But you know what? He's found such a niche in life. He's channeling all of that energy. He is. Some awesome food he's serving up in the DR. He, he, he learned how to use that power for good. He That's did. right. <laughs> there he, you go. There he you did, go. but I do, I do remember that. It was, it was actually a funny moment. 
And, uh, you know, Big Mo, Rod Keith, you know, they were all involved. It was just, it was comical to us because mm -hmm. Derek had probably one of the shortest fuses I ever seen <laughs> in anybody. And he mm -hmm. knows it. But He's probably shaking him. his head we right now. Him. That's right. Of course we do. Gary, oh, speaking of some good folks, we got Gary Rogers, says to tell you hello. Uh, hey, Rogers. Hey, man. We got number seven, Tom Fitz is in the house. Hey, Fitz. Tom. He was part of the crew, too. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Guys, I'm talking with Kerry Clem, of course, wide receiver, tight end, signs with Watson Brown and stays. <laughs> Sarter says, y'all do realize I'm in this line. <laughs> 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 Nothing but love, Derek. Nothing but yeah, love. I know, you. I know you're there, man. I'm just speaking the truth, bro. Kerry comes in with Watson Brown, but you're there for – the DiNardo era coming in. And I don't want to skip too far ahead, but I yeah. know it was vastly different coaches, schemes, personalities, approach to the, the program, but I want to stick with Watson for just a minute. Sure. You make your debut, and it's a memorable game in both ways for you, but I hope it's okay to talk about the Rutgers game in the Meadowlands. Yeah, no, for sure. Set, so my set the stage for us. Now, we won that game, but barely. Only because, <laughs> right. in my recollection, a gust of wind came through the tunnel and held up about a 58-yard field goal attempt by them at the buzzer. Yeah. Win, if I remember correctly. But I, I want to go to your debut. Yeah, I think that was a, a one-point game, to your point. It was mm -hmm. pretty it was pretty close. And that was the year we started, what, 2-0, and 3-0? I mean, we Dude, were – Yeah, Dwayne, if you're in here, buddy, remind me, because I don't have my, my record. Yeah, we were, we, we were on fire. So – yeah, so I had played in uh, a couple of games leading up to the Rutgers game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, like I said, I was playing behind Boo Mitchell. So you're lucky to get a foot on the field as long as Boo was there. That's right. And, uh, I, you know, I remember to this day uh, running a route, 10 yard, 10 yard out, getting the heat from EJ and catching my first pass from him, mm -hmm. first collegiate catch. Couldn't tell me anything. You know, that was a, that was the start of things that were going to be great. <laughs> Came off the field. It was for a first down. So you know you get the pats on the back. You're standing there waiting for your chance to go back in. It was it was phenomenal feeling. And then a few plays later, Boo comes out. I go in, run a play in, and I think it was uh, it's like an inside, it's like a curl or inside hitch route. I go in. EJ's obviously got confidence in me now. He's throwing it to me again. Turn around to catch the ball. And at the moment of contact, the DB comes on the inside and hits me like right in the knee. And I just remember at the moment of contact, that knee going down to the ground, but the foot still staying in place. And it was an instant media collateral, you know, strain, sprain, got up, tried to stand up, fell back down. And, you know, the rest is history. Remember the guys coming to, you know, pull me off the field, go right inside, go into the showers, you know, in the immobilizer and the, in the crutches. And it was, uh, that was probably the third game. I don't think I came back to like the 10th, like the last, you know, game, two games of the season. Did you end up having surgery or just rehab? No, I opted out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, back in the day, got one of those, remember those custom made mechanical knee braces, oh, yeah. those big, those big yeah. things that, that you thought only linemen wore. Yeah, that, um, that clicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they click with your range of motion. Yeah, I ended up in one of those and, and trying to rehab it, which is why it probably took longer than it should have. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I tell you, that was devastating. You know, you work really hard to get ready for that opportunity, and uh, some things happen. You know, some things are out of your control. And you know, that was in the late '80s. And fast forward 25, almost 30 years, or whatever it's been, or more. Yikes! <laughs> yeah. Sports medicine has so vastly changed for the good for the athlete mm -hmm. the, now you have that injury you may not even miss any time or maybe a week or two or three at the most yeah and it's it's incredible how much it's evolved over the time but back then particularly if you had surgery it could be a career ender at that yep. you know at the time so no, you're right. Had a range of emotions going on for weeks after that. Yeah, I did. You know, it's nothing more lonely than uh, sitting in your dorm room with your leg propped up on a Saturday, mm -hmm. watching your team play. Yeah. You know, on, on a 13 inch TV in your dorm room. Uh, uh, were you, Were you a freshman, sophomore? What year were you? No, that was sophomore year. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you at least gotten adjusted academically. So it wasn't like it was your first month on campus. At least you had that behind you from an experience standpoint. Yeah, well, I mean, you're giving me a little credit. I don't think I ever got adjusted academically, but I, I did I did know how to get to the cafeteria and other things <laughs> around there. <laughs> well, let's let's move to some better times, Carrie, in that sure. at least during my time, my most memorable team victory was when we beat your home state, even though we had, sorry, Coach Shep, but the ugliest uniform colors combination we could ever have it was some call it banana yellow others call it something else yellow but we beat yeah. Emmett Smith missing team yeah yeah no it was um that was a that was a great game um and I believe Emmett Emmett yeah so Florida rolls in it was Emmett Smith's senior year or junior year whatever his last year was yeah. and of course they were a powerhouse and I forget they had this um all American defensive back to that was just causing havoc. Oh yeah. 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 Big strong safety guy. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I guess we thought those yellow uniforms were going to make us invincible, which at the end they did, at least we figured no one would want to touch us wearing yeah. those uniforms. You, you knew who else was on that Florida team was John Newman's brother. Andy, I think was on that team. As a oh, DP. was he? I think okay. so. Okay. And they had, uh, Oh, his name is, Oh, uh, he ended up playing third base for the White Sox was their quarterback that day. I can't think of his name. Oh, uh, I can't. I, I oh, can't Lewis Oliver. Either. Thank you, Coach Shep. It was Lewis Oliver. Lewis Oliver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DB. Right, right. Shep said we, we were supposed to wear those your uniform jerseys against Duke, but they didn't arrive in time, so we got to wear them for the party. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who picked those out. I'm sure it wasn't June. Uh, that was not a great color for us. No, but it, it, you do remember it, and you remember that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we started the game, and Emmett played, but uh, the defense was was hot, and they put him out the game. They put they him sure out the did. game. They sure did. Through, big, big defensive stand, I think, in the fourth quarter. Yeah. So it. Oh, yeah, defense was solid, and we gave mm -hmm. them hell for the rest of the game and then hung on to that victory. And I tell you, that's, that's one of the things I always remember. You know, we had our – three and eight, four and seven yeah. seasons. Oftentimes our wins were outside of the conference, but we always had that one upset, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was Florida or UT, we always stuck in an upset in the season, which is like playing golf, right? You get, you get one good hole and you, it makes you want to come out again. That's <laughs> right. Playing. That's right. Or it makes you quit the game for the rest of your life. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it was, was it Herbert Perry? May have been their quarterback. I don't want to confuse okay. him with a pro golfer, but I think his name is Herbert Perry, who ended up playing pro baseball for the White Sox and Rangers later on. But it, but anyway, it's just gotcha. weird stuff that you remember. Yeah. Carrie, what was it about? And I'm not just talking about hanging out at Banditos, but what was <laughs> it when you were away from the game? Mm -hmm. You were away from academics. Was it fraternity life? Was it just hanging with the guys in the dorm? What what was it about Vanderbilt that you fondly reflect back on yeah yeah you know I never got around to getting a fraternity I always felt like the team was the only brotherhood that I really needed and that's not against any any fraternities because those were all wonderful and a lot of the guys on the team were in them and there were days I kind of wish I was part of that but um you know I got a lot from just the team you know we had a great group of guys and you know they came in as most schools though this wasn't unique but for me being around people from all walks of life was great. You know, you learn so much and you take so much away. I mean, like I said, you know, Derek Sorter was my roommate from Atlanta, you know, met, met Sweet Lou and Brett Hayes from California. And we would sit around and exchange music, West Coast and Southern music. You know, they had never heard Luke Skywalker bass. And I had never heard a lot of the, you know, the stuff that they had, um, you know, from uh, the Easy e type music. And so we'd sit and chat about that. Um, like I said, you know, learning, learning and hanging out with the older guys at the time, older guys, you know, TP and, yeah. you know, Boo and, and so forth, um, was just a lot of fun. So just, you know, the camaraderie that we had and, and obviously the shenanigans that, uh, you know, we got into with people like um, Big Mo yeah. quite a bit, you know, you just, you, you can't replicate those, those experiences. Um, so that, that's yeah, really what I took away media from. and everything is captured. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't do that. You can't do that now, but yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I just, I got, I got so much from just oftentimes just sitting back and just watching 
mm-hmm. folks and how they how they approach things and, and you know did things a little bit differently mm-hmm. um but yeah, you know, just the uh, the card games we play in the in the, in the lounge in the towers, um, you know. Never teaching card games, man. Those were the most competitive things. Listen, teaching people how to play spades and never played. Oh man, it was awesome. <laughs> and you never <laughs> want to teach them play. all your tricks. <laughs> no, right. No, I tell you, the, yeah, hanging out hanging out with the guys was probably just the best. Mm-hmm. By by far, was it was the best. Awesome, awesome guys. I got Carrie Clem. We're living some. Great '80s memories. We got David Crop in the house. Hey, David. Good to hey, see you. Crop. Nice. Had an awesome, awesome conversation with David's father a few weeks back, and I really appreciate him spending some time with us. Carrie, when uh, when Watson leaves at the end of the '90 season, you still got more eligibility. You've got another year, and come in comes Donardo, Coach Donardo, and when that mm-hmm. happens, typically. Because you're not one of his guys, not one of his recruits. Yeah. Coaches, and again, this is a blanket statement, don't necessarily make the guys who are on the previous team on the roster a priority. They want their guys in. What was the feeling? What was it like, Watson going out and Donardo coming in? And did you go to Bell Buckle or was that right after you? Uh, that was after. Mm-hmm. That was after. Yeah, you know, um, it's definitely a serious transition when you've been with someone that long. You know, a few years doesn't seem that long, but when you're on the field, you're in the locker room, you're in the weight room, you're eating, you're traveling, you know, with the same leadership, the same coaches, you know, these guys, you know, you build you build the bond with your coaches. Um, you know, sometimes it's a mentorship bond, sometimes it's a fatherly bond, but you, you build those bonds. Uh, you know, if I had only played underneath, you know, Watson for a year, it makes transition easier. But that wasn't the case. You know, he was around the majority of the time we were there. Um, but, you know, but but Denardo, you know, didn't come in, you know, burning bridges and, you know, being nasty about it. I think he had a, he had a smooth transition. So I think for me, the transition really wasn't about him. It was just about me, you know, being able to welcome new leadership and buy into new leadership. And, you know, it was definitely different. But when you're. 20 years old, <laughs> you know, you're still trying to figure out a lot about yourself. Um, you know, there's, there's learnings there too, that you realize that you know, these are the kind of things after the fact that these are the kind of things you have to deal with in the real world once you become an adult anyway. Well, I was, I was going to get there in just a second, but you know, by the time yeah. Coach Leonardo comes in, you're in your fourth, you're finishing your fourth year. Academically, you're well into your, your academic requirements. You probably see the writing on the wall from a graduation standpoint or maybe even a real world, because I don't know if you had aspirations at that time of playing in the next level, some some level of professional ball, but you clearly saw the handwriting, if you will. Yeah. And, and Coach Donardo comes in, but you've still got another year to play of eligibility. And maybe you're looked upon, and I, I wasn't there, I'd already graduated, but maybe you're, you and others, your class or your year, were looked upon, you know, as, as leadership. Maybe did Donardo come to your group and say, I, I need you to, you know, help bring us together to, to buy into my system? Was there any kind of communication from him to the team leadership about that? Yeah, you know, personally, you know, Bernard, I wasn't involved in those conversations with, with Coach Donardo, mm-hmm. um, but I'm sure, I'm sure that happened. You know, there were, you know, I, you know, I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't part of that, that crew. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, there was a core group. I think, you know, when he came in that he identified that he wanted to be, you know, kind of the leadership of the team. And I know that there were a lot of conversations I'm sure about that. Um, but like I said, he, he approached it the right way, but you also knew that over time, you know, he had a plan and he was going to develop his plan, um, you know, moving forward. So I didn't have a problem with coach Donardo or his process. And I think most of the guys, you know, you know, were, were you know, amenable to it as well. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, my biggest struggle was on the field playing the wishbone. That's tight end. Well, that's where I was <laughs> going. How many different offenses did you, Eric oh. Jones one offense, Groans yeah. was a different offense, Healy and, and Doc, Doc were yet a different offense. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. I think we probably ran three or four different ones, you know, when we first started there. 
Um, it was the multiple offense. We had what seven, eight, nine different formations and, and mm-hmm. player packages. And oh my gosh, guys, know. our playbook was oh was 500 pages. <laughs> it was all it was all, it was all over the place, and it was yeah. a lot of fun, right? Uh, you know. Um, and then uh, yeah, then you're right. Then we then Bromos took over, mm-hmm. and you know who's more of the traditional you know drop back passer, and so we kind of ran more of a pro offense style. And uh, yeah, when when Marcus took over, um, we migrated more to the wishbone and yeah my last year in the wishbone i think i don't know man we probably threw to the tight end position less than 10 times <laughs> that entire season not in the first half or the first game the, the, yeah, the season <laughs> yeah the, the season the season the season yeah it was uh it was me and Akos. i think yeah, um, yeah. yeah but pat for, for a while um i don't know why i think he got injured maybe not but um yeah so it was um that's just how it was, you know, <laughs> like I said, some, some things are out of your control and you have to learn how to adjust like real life. Um, but all those changes, you know, you know, Bernard, they just, they just make you better. And oftentimes you don't know it in the time, but they do. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> right. Now, so when you would go home in the break, mm-hmm. Christmas break, I don't know if you came home in the summers, maybe just to visit family and you met up with some of your buddies from Tallahassee, whether they were your high school or the rival schools. Yeah. There's a lot of jawing about because you had guys at Florida, Florida State, maybe other places sure. in the SEC. How, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that interaction. Did you have to put up with a lot or were they were well, you, not that bad? You know, it? yeah, not really. So there were two groups. So my high school was a small school. We graduated with a class of 75. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was that small. Yeah, yeah. Graduating class was 75. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the time, I think I was, there were only two of us that, that played D1 football, mm-hmm. uh, myself and then a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Vertuno, who was a kicker at FAMU. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of guys played some D2 ball. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there were other guys that we played with in the city at bigger schools that went on to play at some of these other schools too. So between, you know, us you know, as a group, there wasn't a whole lot of jawing. You know, we kind of talked about you know, things that were happening and so forth. I had a good time about it. But there was plenty of jawing with guys from other schools, other rival schools that we would see when we would go out in the summer. So, yeah. I got a, name. I got a name for you. I got a name uh, for you. Who you Brad, got? Brad Culpepper. Oh, really? Big Culpepper. Now he's, yeah. he's not in here with us. That yeah. was name No, no, no. Where did he play? Culpepper. Culpepper was at Leon High School, mm-hmm. um, big name in Tallahassee back then. And uh, yeah, yeah, he was, uh, he, he, had, he had quite a bit to talk about. <laughs> where, where did he end up playing? Oh, that's a good question. Was he, hold on. I think he stayed in Florida somewhere. Did he was go to he Florida in, State? I don't, I don't know. Somebody throw that in there. But OJ Fleming has just joined us. And Peebles wanted to remind us of the eye bone offense as well <laughs> yeah the, the, the three stack mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah you're I'm not getting that. the ball you're not getting the ball at all for that no oh TP, no 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 tp said that uh he went to uf coach uh yeah, coach, yeah they okay. said he went, he went to uf gotcha gotcha no i tried to finagle my way into the uh, running back practices <laughs> just so i could get touch the ball but that wasn't working that's very good. Not, only was, guess, not only was I a slow receiver, but I was a slow running back. So here's something I don't ask enough on this show. Sure. And I really think this would make a fabulous panel. And I may have you come back when I can put it together. All right. I want to talk about the transition of the athlete from playing Division I, the highest level of, of football in college in the SEC, high academics, all of that that transition from that life mm-hmm. to the next phase when you're you're now a former athlete, when you're not playing college, I mean, excuse me, professional ball, you're now looking right. for a job or you're, you're back, you're in grad school, but you're not playing. Talk a little bit about your transition, Carrie, from I've graduated, I'm done. I know my career is now behind me as an organized athlete, if you will. That doesn't mean you're done as an athlete. You're still going to compete and do other things. But talk about that transition now into what I'll call civilian life. How was that <laughs> you physically and mentally? How'd you deal with that? Yeah. 
I think um, it's a great, that's a great question. And you're right. We could probably get a group together and talk hours about this because I'm sure everyone's got similar, but unique stories. Um, yeah, I first felt it physically, mm -hmm. right? So my time playing tight end, I could never hold it more than about two and a quarter. Mm -hmm. I tried to put on weight. I tried to put on weight. I can never do it. Now, paying tight end in the SEC at 225, you can imagine, you're getting your butt whipped every day. That's like a rag doll, right? When you're playing against people like Andre Bruce, yeah. right on the end. Yeah. Uh, I, two, three months, you know, after playing at the end of the season, I was already up to like 250. Because <laughs> wow. because I was still eating like we were practicing, but I wasn't, wow. I wasn't burning it off like, like we used to. And I'm but thinking, you know what's so I interesting? Here you hear a lot of linemen they go down a lot of linemen, not all, will go from yeah. 250 to 300, whatever they are, into the 100s, you know, under 200, or they'll lose a lot of weight. Yep. And then some of the skilled guys go the other way. It's, it's I interesting. Know. Well, I think, I think, you know, not to disparage my, my big hogs, because I love all those guys, mm -hmm. but the, the, the workouts were different, right? We're, oh, yeah. we're, running, yeah. we're running 20 yards every play. You're mm -hmm. burning whatever they're trying to hold on. You know, it's not that those guys aren't exerting energy, but it's a little bit different. So they're yeah. eating a lot to hold yeah. that weight. When you stop doing all that running around in circles like we were doing, and you're still eating like you're at the training table, <laughs> that weight just stays on you. Do you so remember, that hits you first physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say, do you remember kind of a turning point for you yeah. that, man, my, my blood pressure is out the window, and I'm only 23 years old? Or, yeah. or you know, I'm, I'm making this yeah. up. No, you're right. So that's that's where it hit, it hit me first physically, and then it hit me mentally, mm -hmm. right? And I realized, okay, this isn't right. I got to do better than this. I got to take care of myself, and I got to figure out to the point you're making, what am I going to do, um, you know, in the next phase of my life? And I think when you're an athlete and you you see your body go, mm -hmm. it, it 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 hits you pretty hard because that's the thing that's gotten you to where you are, right? You know, I mean, obviously well, for your most brain, of you guys. But what about us who never had that body? <laughs> We had the dad body when we were 18. Yeah, we still got still, it at 54. But you still, you still used it. You still used it to perform, right? The, com the, co the, combination, the combination of that in your brain got you through college. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why I didn't run the wishbone. But anyway. Yeah, about yeah, it, wasn't, yeah, what, yeah what, it wasn't about posing at the beach, right? It was about <laughs> that's like, right. Was, right? It's like I, so it was about, I used to be able to do stuff that I know I can't do now because I'm too heavy yeah. to do it. If I go out and try to run, I'm going to pass out. So that, that, that began to click. And it's like, okay, you got to get yourself together. This is the one thing you do control, right? Mm -hmm. You do control your body yeah. so get it back in shape so i started to do that started to think about what was next at the time my wife and i were um, we were engaged well i was getting ready so, to ask you if grace and you were together at this point yeah we were we were we met uh midway through college mm -hmm. um she went to she went to florida and m in tallahassee and we met when i was home one summer and so we we dated toward you know through the end of college and we had planned on getting married afterwards so we were kind of already you know okay post-college you know, what are we going to do? Where are we going to settle down? What are the jobs going to be and so forth? Mm -hmm. So I think for me, kind of immediately jumping into that level of responsibility also helped me begin to formulate a plan along the way, realizing that I'm looking down and my clothes don't fit. I got to do something with all this too. <laughs> so there was, there was a lot going on immediately afterwards. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, over time, you know, when I, I got out of school, you know, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer, you know, like yourself, um, but I uh, didn't immediately go to law school. So I worked in law enforcement down in Florida. I was a, I was a felony probation and parole officer. Well, you had that criminology degree. Yeah, I know. I did that yeah. for a couple of years, yeah. thinking I was going to go to law school and decided I didn't want to go that route. Mm -hmm. And so I um, actually got into the health and fitness world mm -hmm. for a few years afterwards. And I um, did some personal training, did some uh, work with Tony Little. You've probably seen him on television, the guy with the ponytail and the gazelle. Yeah. He was based out of St. Petersburg, Florida, which is where we lived for a while. And uh, did some work with him on some, some projects, some home shopping type stuff. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, got introduced to the pharmaceutical industry. Actually, Derek Sorter, who he had talked about his experiences was telling me about pharmaceuticals along the way. And I was like, oh, that's not for me. That's not for me. And then one day, one of my clients comes in and mentions that they have an opening in the area. Would I be interested in talking to someone? I said, why not? And the rest is history. Interviewed for a job, got a sales rep job and 
kind of settled in. And, you know, again, just like picking a college, mm -hmm. career is kind of the same thing. Once you get in, once you know, you know. Yeah. And I found a, found a sweet spot in, in the business. And that's what I've been doing now for the past 25 years or so, oh. working in biotech. Awesome. Oh, oh, Carl Parker's in the house. Said to tell you about oh, that. CP. Hey. CP. Man, we got the, almost all the receivers are in the house tonight. For Kerry Clinton. I get, I get some love. Getting some receiver love. All right, let's 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 stay. We got just a couple more minutes, Kerry, and I really appreciate yeah. your time tonight. I want to ask you along these same lines, the competitive juices are still there. You're yeah. an athlete. You've been competing since you were four years of age, and now you're 23. You got to get out that competitiveness. But I want to skip the 20s, the 30s. I want to come to the current, Kerry. <laughs> Yeah. That, that competitiveness is never gone because once you're an athlete, you're always an athlete. What do you do now to compete with yourself? Yeah. With father time or whatever. What do you do? Yeah, no, you're right. You never lose that. You mm -hmm. never lose it. My kids will tell you that. Um, it's put our it's put our relationship in, <laughs> in many binds over the years in, in a joke in a joking way because I was sure. a dad that never yeah. let never let them beat me in anything right no like you're have no you have no 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 you know no you're not going to win um, well you know for a while I was really active still playing old man basketball and you know flag football and things like that until I ruptured my Achilles like most old guys do mm -hmm. so I had to migrate to the sports where. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you can maintain for, for the rest of your life without, you know, blowing any other, any other ligaments or joints. So I golf, um, I cycle, um, you know, that kind of keeps me going, you know, quite a bit. And, uh, I like to get out and I like the outdoors. So hiking, you know, that type of stuff, snowshoeing, I got into, you know, it's past winter. Wow. So I just like this. I like to, I like to be outside and, you know, it's not now it's not necessarily the competition against others, although it's hard not to when you're playing golf with your buddies or mm -hmm. out cycling with a group. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I have found the inward competition of just trying to, you know, yeah. be a better version of myself when I'm out there, do a little bit better, you know, evolve whatever it is that I'm doing. So it's still competitive, but I, I try to worry less about everyone else and just worry about trying to be competitive with myself because that's that's what got me in trouble with the injury, <laughs> trying to <laughs> trying to do too much. You know, I'm I, like probably most families now that iPhones and Apple's taken over the world. My immediate family, my daughter's brother and some others in the family, were all on this same the same uh, workout app, and it mm. shows you what you do each day. Oh and yeah, I see that my brother has done one more percent than me. <laughs> I'll be darned if I'm going to bed without bumping it back. Nope. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong That's with right. that. Yeah, I'm part of a fitness group that, while it's not that competitive, I still mm -hmm. look at the numbers. Yeah, I look at the numbers. Oh, yeah. Look at the hours. Look at the minutes. Oh yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Man, yeah, I, it's fun. Gary, I, I could talk with you, bud, all day long. I, I, I want to be respectful. The same. You know. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, Bernard. This is great. I don't know if you remember. You know, a couple of couple of touch points you and I have. First of all, because you were only a hundred miles away, mm -hmm. I remember you know bumming a ride off of you a couple of times going home and having a family member meet us in, in Dothan to pick me up, which was just awesome. I can never thank you too much for that. But also, I remember visiting, and I know we spent time together on my visit because I had always worn number nineteen since I could remember, mm -hmm. and that was one of the things that I just wanted to make sure I could get number nineteen whatever college I went to. And who had number nineteen but you? But you had it because you were waiting for 11. Yep. That's <laughs> right. Like, dude, you were like, dude, I'm getting 11 next year. 19 is yours. I'm like, all right, that's another box check. I got it. This, this is where I got to be. So I was, you, you, you were one of the reasons why I came to Vandy. You asked me that question earlier. You were one of the reasons because you made sure I'll, I got my number. I'll take that credit every day. I was, <laughs> I was ultimately waiting on Carl Perker to graduate. 12 was my number, but I couldn't get there for two years. <laughs> so I took 11, then I took 12. But, uh, oh, right. Harry, what a great conversation, my friend. I have so enjoyed catching up with you. Same, man. Same. I appreciate you doing this. You know, this is, I tell you what, I know we're out of time, but I'll ask y'all, interview you for a second. What was your motivation behind doing the, the conversations here? Because I love this and I appreciate you having me on board, but I love hearing from the other guys too. But what was, what was that trigger in your mind that said, I want to do this? Because it wasn't there. Because okay. we've been 
over the decades a collective without a community. And the more I talked to various teammates and friends who played, well, I didn't know so-and-so and I didn't know about this or that. I just, I just wanted to bring everybody together because we all have the same experiences, but a little bit different timetables. We all know McGugan. We all know about that mm -hmm. horrible astroturf in the 80s at the <laughs> Dudley Field. We yeah. all know about the, the coupons we get on Sundays and how many times we had to eat at Gaddy's or Fuddruckers or Tony Romans, whatever. <laughs> but now that, Carrie, I've done about 110 of these conversations, going wow. into the 50s, players from the 50s up to players who played on last year's team, Cam Johnson, who's now at Arizona State every one of these conversations has the same thread through it. We all can relate to the towers or love yeah. or wherever. And I just think getting to know the different generations of Commodores has been the coolest thing for not just me. I mean, I'm the one who shepherds it, but just having conversations, you and I hadn't talked in 30 years. I know, man. I know. But, man, we just pick up like I hadn't seen you since last week. Well, I tell you what, man, this is phenomenal, and I'm so happy you've done it. Just here, first of all, hearing you call a lot of these names that are on tonight brings back so many memories. Mm -hmm. But also preparing to talk to you, maybe just stop and think about all the wonderful times, mm -hmm. the good stuff, the learnings, the shenanigans. You know, before you got on, we we're talking about Big Mo. I can't. Even, that's a whole nother hour of the stuff that he and I used to get into. Mm -hmm. You're right, but it's One just day I'm gonna have him on this show. <laughs> I may have to sit right next to him. But... I, I, I'm, I'll come to Bessemer, we'll pull him out. We'll, we'll, go, come on. we'll go get him. Oh, go ahead, go ahead and finish. No, it. but my, my, my point is having you talk to folks and hearing from everyone yeah. is wonderful, but also what it triggered in my mind and the thought mm -hmm. process and it's reminiscing has been great. And hearing all these names that are on to join us tonight, it's, it's just it's phenomenal, man. This is a highlight. For me for sure well, it, it really is each week for me and you know it's not it's so rarely about what happens on the field i know we right. touched a little bit about some of yours but that's not what the, it's about your journey and it's about your lessons and your your buddies and your your friendships joe people said he's been down in waldorf maryland for 20 years he's going to connect with you soon joe that's crazy yeah i've been in, I've been in bel air maryland joe for 20 years too we probably crossed paths at some point and didn't even know. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Gary, thank you, bud. Stick around. We love it. After I hang up, or we'll sign off. Guys, exactly, I got man. Commodores through the end of the year. Keep coming back on Tuesdays. Keep flying those victory flags. We got Wake this weekend. We need to bring home another W. That's it. Anchor down, man. Anchor down. Y'all have a good night. See you next week.